You know that I've been waiting for this for ages. My solar panels were installed back in December last year, but the battery system didn't turn up due to stock issues. When it eventually did turn up in April, it was missing the inverter. I've no idea how that happened because we ordered a full AC connected bundle. Even the Wi-Fi dongle turned up, just no inverter. Anyway, it's all here now, installed and working great. So let me take you to the garage and run you through my installation. Here's the battery, it's an 8.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery with 100% depth of discharge. Behind the scenes it's actually a 10 kilowatt hour battery but with 18% reserved by the battery management system. Uh, just above this battery is the DC breaker which cuts the connection between the battery and the inverter and uh, next to the breaker is the EM115 which is basically a really fancy CT clamp. The clamp is outside in my meter box monitoring the main grid feed to my home. You can see I have quite a growing collection of CT clamps in there now. The EM115 is connected to the inverter using a twisted pair from a Cat5 cable. Following the cables we end up at the inverter itself. Uh, yeah, I know that there is a big gap down here uh, below the inverter but that space is intentional because I intend to have a, a second large battery fitted here in the future. Back to the inverter, this is the AC connected version which doesn't support DC connected solar panels. It's purely for providing your home with energy storage. Uh, it has another CT clamp wired in directly which is monitoring the solar generation. And uh, underneath you can see this giant Wi-Fi dongle which is basically a full on computer. This is probably the most annoying part of the inverter for me because it's Wi-Fi only. There's no ethernet option which would have been really useful for me as the the inverter is right next to my main network switch. And down here you will notice this special power socket. This is attached to the EPS output of the inverter which provides power straight from the battery during power cuts. I've also had my light circuits connected to the EPS here in their own dedicated board and uh, this large switch here is a manual changeover. In the up position the EPS will be running directly off the grid but I've left it in the down position so as the switchover during one of our many power cuts happens automatically. Give Energy have actually announced a new second generation inverter which does have an ethernet port built in and new batteries with larger capacities and built in DC isolation so everything I've just shown you is already out of date. But what I really want to talk to you about is how I've integrated this with Home Assistant using local connectivity, so directly over your network without jumping out to the internet. Before we start properly, you're going to need to make sure you have a couple of things up and running in advance. Firstly, you'll need some way to run a Docker container which will act as a link between your inverter and Home Assistant. Hopefully at some point soon the developers will adapt this into an actual Home Assistant add-on which will really simplify this whole process. I'm using my Synology NAS to run Docker because I already use it for a number of other things. Secondly, you need an MQTT broker running. If you don't have this already and you're not sure what you're doing then head on over to the Home Assistant add-on store and search for Mosquito Broker like this. Install it using all of the default options and once it's up and running click on the configuration tab. Now you need to make sure that there's a username and password configured in the login section like you can see here and make a note of the username and password that you're using because you will need it later on. Scroll down to the network section and then make sure that 1883, 1884, 8883 and 8884 are all exposed by the add-on and then click on save and you'll be prompted to restart the add-on. Uh, once it's restarted or Home Assistant should auto detect a new MQTT integration. Just make sure that it's uh, there in your integration section before continuing. Over on your Docker server, and in my case that's Synology DSM, the container we're going to be installing is called GiveTCP. So open Docker, click on registry and search for Britcat forward slash give underscore TCP dash MA and there should be one result which you double click on to download and choose the latest version. Once it's downloaded click on the container tab and create a new container. Choose the image that you've just downloaded and select next and then for network we want to use the same network as the docker host to make things easier for us. 
and then on this page we want the advanced settings. Now there are four parameters that we need to configure here. The first is the inverter IP. Now this is the IP address that your Give Energy inverter has on your network. Finding out your inverter's IP address is a tricky thing for me to talk you through, but perhaps the easiest way for you to do this is to check your router's interface. By default it has a host name that starts with the letters HF. Mine for example was HF dash A21. Once you've got the IP address you just type it in here uh, like that and then scroll down to the MQTT section of parameters. Now remember I asked you earlier to remember a username and password? Well the MQTT username and password fields are where you want to put those now. And then you need to fill in the MQTT address. This is the IP address of your Home Assistant server or MQTT broker if you're running it on a separate server. Now you just fill it in here, click on save and hopefully it'll run and detect your inverter automatically. Check your devices list and if you filter by give TCP you should see several devices and each device will have a bunch of entities associated with them. Now how have I made use of this? Well, Give Energy are actually in the process of adding a feature to their app that lets you charge your battery based on the solar forecast, but unfortunately that's been coming soon for quite a while. I wanted to try and make sure that if the day is forecast to be quite dull and not much solar energy is going to be generated, then I will fully charge the battery. On the flip side, if it's going to be really sunny, then I only need to make sure that there's enough charge in the battery to get me through until generation starts. There's obviously a sliding scale in between those two scenarios and with a bit of trial and error I came up with an automation. My off-peak energy tariff starts at half past midnight for four hours so I've set this automation to trigger at quarter to midnight. The forecast.solar integration provides me with an energy forecast for the following day so my first action is to create a variable for use in this automation uh, that estimates a target state of charge uh, percentage based on that solar energy forecast. These are my values, yours may differ based on your expected baseline energy use. In the second action I then set the give TCP target SOC entities state to that calculated value uh, from the previous step. I then wait one minute for it to take effect. Now I had a few issues with it not always applying so this if statement compares the entity uh, against the variable and if they don't match we try it again. I could improve on this by looping around it until it works but to be honest trying twice appears to work fine now for me. I then output that into a text string and save it to a, an input text helper just to help with logging. And then finally I wait until 5 a.m. and set the state of charge back to 100%. This is just a, a fail safe in case Home Assistant fails during the day. I don't want the state of charge value getting stuck on a low one for days at a time. Anyway, there's a lot to take in here, I know, so I'll put all of the details and that automation up on my website and I'll put a link in the description below. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. Thank you for watching, goodbye.